With that important service announcement out of the way, I can go back to ogling the map because a lot has changed since I last showed it. This is what it used to look like and this, when I zoom out to the same extent, is what it looks like now. A lot more black in this version, black representing unexplored territory. How did that happen? Well, I reset parts of my world for which I used the tutorial tool that I've linked in the description. So I've pretty much only kept the places where I've built my base, spawn, slime farm, squid farm. Here I did not build anything because this is the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, the pillager villa that I conquered. I also undid some of the damage I'd done to the landscape harvesting resources. I cleaned out all the chunks surrounding this portal, really only preserving that one chunk the portal is in. Same for this area here. The badlands are already revisited. Here I have yet to return. Unfortunately, I couldn't fix all the damage because some of it is inside the portal chunk. And then here, that's where my end portal is. I stayed far away from that one, didn't want to risk destroying it because I just built a sand zebra over there and it's working rather splendidly. So this is what's left of my world. There were a couple of reasons why I did it, but it certainly reduces the side of the world, which is a good thing, and then it also means I've got better access to the new 1.20 features. I've already made the necessary preparations, I put aside a saddle and a couple of leads in case I come across a camel, lots of torches, leathers in case I find a trails run, water breathing potions for any underwater activities, a couple of basics, and then all the ingredients required to make a brush. 32 brushes to be precise, which is probably overkill, but you never know. And then of course I also have a lot of shulkers, bait boats and an instant health potion in my inventory. But back to the map, because the question is, which direction do I want to go into? Or rather, what 1.20 feature do I hope to encounter first? I have an interest in going this way, because before the cleanup this was a rather big meadows biome, and I'm hoping 1.20 has turned some of it into cherry growth. On the other hand, I would also like to find a sniffer. Let's do the cherry thing first. So which direction is that actually? It's west, okay. Oh, I don't have my thing to tell me that I'm going west. Yeah, I'm missing a couple of mods, uh, which is actually <laughs> quite annoying. Going west means we can pass by our most recent build. In that previous video, I rather brazenly said I would breed more bees if I lost any, but honestly, I wasn't expecting the bee population to tank this quickly. I must have had 10 to 12 bees in here, and now, hopefully four. And of course, they're less than cooperative when it comes to procreation. Nobody wants to come out. Oh, and now he's gone back in. I'm gonna have to leave it for another time. Yeah, I didn't mention it before, but I'm exploring on foot. Because it's... I don't know. I just like it more. Okay, so the place we're looking for is somewhere up or beyond that hill. There's a little village there, but nothing pink. Oh, white horses. Hmm. I don't think I've got any white horses yet. white horses and there's white horses interesting no sign of uh, what I'm looking for yet okay. I spent a quiet night in the village and now yeah if I go that way that's the right direction Oh, 
there, there. Oh, more white horses. Oh, we found it. What is that? Oh, that's pigs. Huh. Oh, wow. It's quite big. Look at that. Wow. I found the cherry grove. <gasps> the flowers. I need to get some flowers. This is so pretty and it goes on and on. The entire meadows biome seems to have been turned into a cherry grove biome. Yep, definitely the case. Okay, so now I need to chop down a tree, but which one? I don't want to damage this place any more than I already have. Let's go for this wonky looking one. Well, actually I shouldn't cut leaves, I need saplings. Oh, rabbit. It was a baby rabbit. Oh. How many saplings have I got? 11. That's good. Oops, that wasn't very well worked out. Because, to be honest, my graphics are not doing so well. I changed some of my settings because I thought my computer was being a little bit sluggish. Uh, still not ideal and I really don't know why. Anyway, let's continue. There are some warm and or lukewarm oceans in the neighborhood that could prove interesting. Okay, so I've veered a little bit off course and I'm greeted with all these tall birch trees. Unfortunately, no sign of a trails run in this area, so we move on. Oh, I was gonna say, look at the light, but it's actually lava destroying the forest. I better stop this. No, no, no. This is quite stop going everywhere. Okay. Oof, I'm not done. That was a bit stressful. The trees up there are also in fire, but they're beyond help. And I don't think the fire will spread any further. So I'm okay with that. Three thousand blocks further south compared to my last reported position, right here. And boy oh boy, has it been a long and arduous trek, full of magical sights and dangerous adventures. I investigated a shipwreck, redecorated a ruined portal, and expertly located and expertly located. And eventually located a treasure. I also encountered my first ship of the desert. I learned no sand is to be found in village wells. And I said hi to John. Hi John. He used to have his head stuck in the ceiling. So the reset has been good to him. I'm not 100% convinced he can actually leave his bed. But I'm not here to dwell on the past. It's this tiny underwater run I'm interested in because this marks the start of my career as an archaeologist. What incredible treasure am I going to dig up first? All right, all right, we all know it's going to be utter rubbish, but to me, whatever it is, it's going to be a treasure nevertheless. Exciting, my first ever sus sand. Oof, wrong button. Oh. 
Ah, oh, it's sweet. I mean, yay, it's sweet. What's next? The best I got out of it, this treasure map. Luckily, it's nearby. Oh wow, more ruins. And also more baddies. A lot more baddies. Please wait in line. One at a time. I will not forget to breathe. it sounds I think the coast is clear this place is rather huge I'm gonna set up another temporary base and then I'm gonna be busy for a while is it is it no Is it? It is. I'm a natural born archaeologist, biologist and dinosaurologist. During the excavation I found many more treasures, which for your convenience, definitely not mine. I've gathered in these shulkers. The snort shirt came from the first smaller runs. I got one sniffer egg, I took the sea lantern and then there's a whole lot of other stuff. I used up two water breathing potions, so I must have spent about half an hour on this second dig site. Now let's head inland and follow that river because there's one more place I want to visit. is gonna archaeologize and then when I'm done I will take you to the other camel so the two of you can make babies. Yeah, wiggle your ears. Careful when we enter the temple. Okay, so I don't know how this extra room works and how you get in exactly, but let's start with the most obvious. And then we dig in. If I keep my shovel angled the right way, I should only dig up one block of sand and not destroy any others. I should. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm a natural born archaeologist. I'm a natural born clumsy archaeologist. First I thought these guys were just curious, but now I'm starting to think they don't want me to take their camel. 
Look people, this animal is part of an international breeding program. If successful, you'll get a camel back. So step aside, will you? Where am I gonna put you? Not with the pigs. You would fit in, but I fear you're gonna jump the fence. Okay, now how did I end up on one? Let me finish this. Yes, I know. These are the best stables you've ever witnessed. Also the only ones, definitely helps. But you have to understand, I don't have time now to engage in all sorts of complicated building affairs. This archaeologist is in need of a break. What are the chances they're gonna suffocate when they get up? Hmm, I can't risk it. That looks a little awkward, but okay. I said I need a break, so I'm gonna fly home. Look what I found. I didn't expect to come across this so easily. Well, easily. My computer was giving grief again, so I started looking for a place to land when I saw a couple of odd blocks sticking out. On the map we're um, a tad little bit of course, but it's hard to check the map while flying, at least for me it is. I may be a tired and overworked archaeologist in need of a break. I'm still really glad to have found these ruins. One not an important downside, they're smack bang in the middle of my least favourite overworld biome, Baddy Paradise. take drastic measures here. I can't play like this. Not in this biome where the smallest mistake can mean you're undoing. It's raining but I'm nice and dry inside. I completely sealed off the entrance so no baddies can get in. And I switched off my shaders which should lead to more stable footage once I've dug a bigger hole. The going will be slow though because there's lots of sus gravel all over the place. We're about one hour into the excavation. I've built a ladder right next to what I think is the tower of the construction. And I've set up a small base of operations, hopefully well outside of the ruins. I found my first shirt, first sign and first armor trim. And regrettably also destroyed my first sus gravel. I made up for it by brushing regular gravel. I find I'm doing that quite a lot, probably due to the light. Angling the shovel right, like I did in the desert temple, is quite challenging in these small spaces, so I've reverted to removing gravel by hand, unless I'm 100% sure the surrounding blocks are safe. So if you're short on flow, frail ruins are a fine way to get some, and then some more. Another thing I'm doing is digging hallways around the outside of the ruins, so that I get a better idea where it's safe and less safe to dig. So when I do this, I like to think I'm taking a calculated risk. 
I already collected plenty of rubbish. What am I saying? These are invaluable ancient artifacts that will tell us a lot about the beings that resided here and the purpose of these buildings. Be on the lookout because sus gravel can be found in the weirdest of places. Oops. Good thing I didn't break this one. You might be thinking I'm here to record an intro, but actually I'm trying to peek around the corner to see what this place looks like from the outside. A dirt bridge would also work, but you have to realize it's a jungle out there. Now I'm recording an actual intro. I was going to give you a tour around the place, but you know what? Rather than admiring this ransacked beauty, why don't you go out there and excavate your very own trails rune? If you need extra motivation, this is the stuff I got out of my adventure. A whole lot of stone and dirt. You'll have less stone if you skip the digging around the outside part. A fair amount of knickknacks. A disappointing number of wooden hose. If this is what you're after, dig up an underwater run. And then last but not least, the good stuff. Of course you'll be unearthing many more, because you won't kill at least six pieces of sus gravel that we're posturing as their regular counterpart. Oh wow, that trails rune is really close to base. Hmm, not used to seeing the base without shaders, looks a little different. Anyway, we no longer have any excuses to ignore the stuff on the notice board behind me, specifically the top row. That's gonna happen in an upcoming episode. Not all at once, of course. I like to experience being relaxed and alive in between the dying bits. So that's something to look forward to. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. A huge shout out to Minecraft content creator Waxfraud for letting me use his music. And goodbye.